record. As um, Jewel can attest, she's always, always the one reminding me or um, someone else is always reminding me to, to record. Um, okay, I think that's working, all right. So this, mo uh, this morning we're going to be uh, working through um, a couple of different um, items and to start us off, uh, again, let me just double check that. Alfred's not here. Okay, he's not here. Um, but uh, Alfred Herrera is the um, director of, the, of, of CCCP and also the Dean for Academic Partnerships. He's been at UCLA for over 40 years or 40 years at this point, and he's really built um, a portfolio of working with students of color, transfer students, uh, undocumented students, um, and just really providing pathways to uh, towards a meaningful and powerful uh, transformative type of education. So uh, hopefully he'll be able to join us a little later. Um, but we want to start off with um, meeting the people behind this webinar uh, for the next two days. Um, and uh, I'm blessed to have these folks um, be part of this team. So I'm gonna have them introduce themselves. So why don't we start with Alejandro? Good morning, good morning, Hualitonali, everyone. My name is Alejandro Shipekua Juarez Ugande, and I'm one of the CCP Alejandro? peer advisors. Yeah. Much mm -hmm. love. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And let's um, start, Bobby. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so uh, my name is Bobby, um, also a peer advisor, uh, UCLA alumni, um, OG MOC. Um, did one of the first uh, MOC programs. I'm super excited to be here. So, yeah. Sorry, Alejandro, were you? Um, go ahead. That was it. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm sorry. Sorry about that, Alejandro. Go for it. He always does that. He always does that. <laughs> Now, nah, good morning, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Now, Alejandro has been uh, the force behind for the last few years. I could have not done any of this without Alejandro. So thank you so much for being such an um, inspiration for me as well. Um, I'm not sure if Luca is here at this point. And I, again, my name is Santiago Bernal. I'm the system director for the center. I've been with um, UCLA for a long, 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 long time as my um, best friend who right now is celebrating his birthday in Mexico City. Um, um, always says uh, we went to school in the 1900s um, before there was uh, internet, before there was, uh, yes. Uh, and as an English major, I can definitely attest to the fact that I had to use a typewriter to write papers and that was not uh, that was not fun. So uh, definitely um, been around for quite a while to see not only the changes in technology, but the changes um, socially and the changes um, that are that we hope can transform the transform the academy. And and what we're all about, and what I'm all about, is as a as an immigrant, as someone who left El Salvador during the Civil War, is to create change positive change for all of us. So hopefully that's what we're gonna be able to do today. But the rest of the team also includes Frank Castorena. How's everybody doing? My name is Frank Castorena Jr. I am a program coordinator here for the Center for Community College Partnership and I oversee the partnerships between Los Angeles Mission College and LA Trade Tech. I am a proud transfer. I transferred from East Los Angeles College, so go Huskies. Uh, transferred to UCLA after graduating from UCLA. I ended up going to grad school at the other school uh, with the other colors and the other mascots and I got my master's in social work. So welcome everyone. And Pat. Good morning, everybody. My name is Patrocinio Cruz. I am a peer advisor at Los Angeles Valley College, also a alumni of Los Angeles Valley College. Um, and I also uh, participated in MOC, MOC? Um, in 2018. Um, and uh, it, that the program helped me become what I am today. And um, currently uh, current going into my senior year at UCLA. Thank you, Pat. 
Uh, Beto? You're muted, Beto. Oops, thank you. I busted a Santi. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Alberto Moreno. <laughs> Feel free to call me Beto for short. Um, I didn't do MLC. The program was not uh, available yet when I was a community college student, but I am a proud product of a CCP participating both in Classic Site and Site Plus. Um, I oversee our partnership as a program coordinator uh, with Los Angeles Pierce College, so called Brahmas. Like Frank, I'm also a proud transfer. I transferred to UCLA from Long Beach City College. Uh, go Vikings, if we have any Vikings in the room. Um, I graduated from UCLA in 2018. Um, I'm very happy to be back with CCP. It's been a full circle. Um, and, you know, CCP has also pushed me to pursue graduate school. So I'm currently at Loyola Memorial University pursuing a master's in counseling and hopefully law school in a few years from now. Um, welcome everyone. And I also wanna thank the entire committee for putting this uh, amazing event, two day event uh, together. Um, Santi, um, especially, you know, being the backbone of it all as well. Um, so yeah, welcome, uh, uh, enjoy today and be ready for, for um, you know, to receive great um, information. Um, Pedro? Good morning, y'all. My name is Pedro Mariano Gonzalez. Uh, he, him, and pronouns. Um, I'm entering my second year at UCLA, transferred from Mount Sac, um, majoring in Chicanx and Central American Studies. Um, and I was also a two time Triple CP scholar. Two time, all right. Um, Daniel, unfortunately, is not able to join us today, but uh, Miguel? Good morning, everybody. You know, uh, my name is Miguel Beltran. I'm a proud transfer student from Pasadena City College. And, you know, this is going to be my, my new journey right here at UCLA. I also did the Men of Color MOC back in, you know, 2019, where, you know, it, it's been a full circle, to be honest, you know, and man, it's just a brotherhood, you know, and um, I love y'all. Let's go. All right, let's go. Let's go, MOC. 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 <laughs> and um, Andrew? Sure. What's up, y'all? Uh, my name is Andrew Savella. I transferred from Pasadena City College. Um, I'll be starting on um, at Cal, fall 2021. Uh, I'm a SOS major, and um, I'm a two-time triple CP scholar. I did MOC and uh, Site Plus. All right, see, uh, we have um, repeaters. So hopefully, if this is your first year at a community college, that means you can come back for a second year. You can come back, for a you can come back as many times as you want to come back. Um, as long as you allow us to walk in your journey, that's really what we are hoping to do. Um, I'm going to have the full-time staff introduce themselves. So let's see who do we have. Um, Jewel. Good morning, good morning, good people. It is a pleasure and an honor to be with you all this morning. Thank you for allowing me to share space. It is good to be in good company with so many people I love and getting to new, new getting to know new people. My name is Jewel Bourne. I am a program coordinator here at the Center for Community College Partnerships. I specifically oversee our partnerships with Los Angeles Valley College. So go Monarchs. Um, super excited to see some monarchs in the space. <laughs> hey, Daniel. Hey, Johnny. Yes, you get personal shout outs from me. Um, and I, a little bit about myself. I, I also co-lead, co co-facilitate, co-manage, whatever it is, um, our communications team, um, along with Blanca and Daniel. So that's super cool. But a little bit about myself is I am a first generation college student uh, and I am a, <laughs> a um, I am a, um, Again, first generation college student, daughter of immigrants from South America, Guyana. Um, and I am a, I'm one of those repeat, I'm one of those repeaters. So I participated, I was a um, CCB scholar three times in a row. I've been around CC, yes, big ups GT. Sorry, <laughs> I got really excited. Um, 
<laughs> and I love this space and I'm so privileged to have been a part of this space for the last 10 years. I'm in a number of capacities, transferred to UCLA from Santa Monica, majored in English and gender studies and just never left, never left home. Um, I am also a rising second year um, PhD student at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, working on my doc working on my PhD in higher education to continue doing this work to ensure access and equitable um, equitable practices for transfer students of color. Um, and so that is that is that is what I love to do. I love this space that it inspired me to go on to grad school and really randomly, and I know I'm taking up too much time and too much space, but I am really excited to be in this space because the people that you're getting to hear from today, specifically Amari and Justin, were my peer advisors back in the day. So it really does come full circle all the way around in CCP. So if you haven't been a part of this space before, this is what you're in for. So thank you for sharing space with us, sharing space with us today. And um, I'm really excited for you all. And you never take up uh, too much space, Jewel. Thank you for honoring us to have to with your presence and always um, dropping some wisdom and some and some positivity and some grace. I definitely have learned that from you. Uh, so thank you, um, Blanca. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome to this amazing space. Uh, it's great to follow up after my sister, my Libra sister, Jewel. Uh, I, um, my name is Blanca Alcantara Hershey. I'm the office coordinator as well as the social media co coordinator. Um, I also transferred from Santa Monica College. So, woo -woo. Um, quick story Justin told me about CCCP. He told me to apply. Uh, and so I applied and I got in and he it was actually my peer mentor as well. <laughs> he helped me revise my uh, my questions and everything, my application. So yes, shout out to Justin. Um, and uh, I graduated from, from um, UCLA in 2014. While I was at UCLA, I was part of IDEAS, which is a, a support group for undocumented students. Graduated, did some work. Uh, with an accompanying minors um, and immigrant rights in DC, came back to the nest and I've been here as a CCP ever since. So I'm just glad to continue to do the work with transfer students. And, you know, we can attest to how important this, this program is and how transformative um, it can be. And, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a current mother raising and a, a wonderful uh, boy and, you know, I'm just glad to be in this space so he can be a, an amazing human being one day. So welcome y'all. Thank you, Blanca. Thank you for all you do and, and for that bridge baby. Um, and uh, Ariel. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome. Really happy to be in this space with you. Um, my name is Ariel. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I'm the program coordinator for CCCP over at West LA College and LA Southwest College. Um, and so shout out to anyone from those colleges. I think I saw a few of you um, when I was looking. I'm a little nosy, but um, <laughs> I am also a proud transfer. I transferred from Pasadena City College. So shout out to Lancers. Um, yes, go Lancers. And um, I transferred over to UCLA, worked with um, CCCP. I also was a advisee or mentee in the program when I was at PCC, but worked as a peer advisor um, and worked a bit back over at PCC and now I'm back here working as full-time staff. So really happy to be here, happy to be in this space and just MOC has always been such a great and wonderful program every single year and it just gets better every year. So I honestly can't wait for the committee to see their labor of love and their vision unfold. This has been a wonderful thing that they've been putting together for y'all. Um, and I can't wait for y'all to experience the beauty of this program and everything that they've been doing for y'all um, and for you to get welcomed, to the, welcomed into this space, meet um, all of these beautiful people. Um, you're so blessed to be in this space, but um, have a wonderful day. Um, unlearn and learn new things, take in a lot of knowledge, breathe, have a wonderful time. And you're going to be hearing that MOC acronym in your sleep, in your dreams, mm -hmm. <laughs> everywhere. So um, have a wonderful day. <laughs> uh, let's see, um, Perla. 
Good morning, everyone. Um, it's awesome to be here. This is my first MLC event. I've heard about it. I've seen old um, sessions of it. So I'm like really excited to be here. Um, my name is Perla Partida and I'm the coordinator for Los Angeles City College and Los Angeles Harbor College. Um, I myself, like many of my, um, my coworkers here, um, my family also transferred. I transferred from Mount San Antonio College, so go Mounties. Um, and I was able to transfer to UCLA. <clears throat> and then from there, I was able to go to USC, just like Frank, I know, um, and mm -hmm. receive my master's degree um, two months ago, actually, um, in educational counseling. So it's been also a full journey, and it all had to do with CCP as well. I started off as a scholar, um, then a peer advisor, um, and now a coordinator. Um, throughout my entire journey, I was also a parenting student. So me and my daughter have been through this journey together since she was four months old. Um, so she can she can give you a tour of, of some of the campuses. <laughs> um, she knows them very well. Um, and I just wanna welcome you all. This is a wonderful space. Um, I'm very happy to be here. And just like Arielle said, um, learn a lot of things. Um, and I hope this empowers you to keep on going to keep pursuing your dreams. Thank you so much. Thank you, Perla. Thank you, um, Shelly. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Buenos dias. Uh, happy Monday to you all. So good to see you um, and be in your company. I am Shelly Gonzalez, Program Coordinator here at CCP. Um, also transfer student, first gen. Um, and I, I currently oversee the East LA uh, College Partnership. So shout out to any Husky, shout out to any returning scholars, um, shout out to the planning committee, um, and shout out to everyone for just being here on a Monday morning. Um, it's so great to be in this space. Um, super excited, looking forward to today's webinar. Um, yeah, so hello, and I'll see you around. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Chelly. Um, and uh, Gabby, my amigota Gabby, where are you? Hola, amigo. Good. Good morning. Buenos dias a todos. Uh, uh, welcome to the, you know, MC webinar. And I also want to thank, you know, the committee the, uh, for, you know, doing this uh, resultful webinar. And just to talk a, a little bit about myself, my name is Gabriela Abraham and I work for CCCP as a program representative. Um, a product of CCCP because I transferred from Los Angeles Valley College a long time ago. <laughs> and I was uh, in 2014 actually, but prior to that, I was two years, you know, part of CCCP. I was part of classic site and then, you know, another program. And I graduated from uh, UCLA in 2017. I even forgot already. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I was a first generation non traditional parenting student. I also first generation immigrant from uh, Mexico and a mother of two children. I went back to school after 20 years. You know, and uh, as I said, you know, I didn't think that I was, you know, I never, when I was at uh, Los Angeles Valley College, I didn't consider UCLA because I thought that, you know, that university was probably not for me for being an immigrant and also, you know, for uh, being a non-traditional student. But when I was part of CCCP, you know, CCCP motivated me and gave me the tools and resources on how to transfer to UCLA. So uh, I want to say that si se puede. So you are in the right place, you know, apply, get that much, as much information as you can, connect with, you know, presenters. And what can I say, you know, that uh, enjoy the webinar and, Yes, and learn as much as you can. And welcome all. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And I think that's it for the full and so Hopefully I didn't miss anyone. Um, I don't think I have. Um, all right. Santi, Suleika is here. Oh, uh, Suleika. 
Hi, you didn't have to introduce me, Santi. I'm just here to support. Hi, everyone. I'm really happy to be here and share space. My name is Uleka Bravo. I am a recent graduate from UCLA. Like Perla, I am also a parenting student, so my daughter has seen me through this journey at UCLA. I transferred from Antel Valley College, so that's a little bit up north, um, but my journey at UCLA has been for three years, and I'm really happy that I'm coming back for my master's degree um, in higher education at UCLA as well. So I will be here for another year. And I'm hoping to, after that, that I go to law school. So we'll see, but I'm here to support, happy to be here, share space with everyone. And I'm really happy for y'all to see this panel because this panel is going to be amazing. So just like, thank you everyone. And I'm excited to be here. Of course, Suleika, you are important. You have been doing important work, not only um, for parenting students, not only for uh, transfer students, but for all students. So um, definitely um, it's an honor to have you uh, amongst us uh, as well. So thank you. All right, everyone. So uh, as you can see, it takes a village. Um, uh, definitely we don't do this uh, on our own. Uh, we definitely lean on each other and we um, really try to um, to leverage all of our, our, our talents. So, um, and to that end, I'm gonna ask the talented Alejandro to go next. All right. So here at the Center for Community College Partnership at UCLA, we acknowledge the Tongva people as the traditional land caretakers of the Tongavar, Los Angeles Basin and South uh, uh, Channel Islands. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work for the indigenous peoples in this place. As a land grant institution, we pay our respects to the ancestors, the elders, and our relatives, relations, past, present, and emerging. So please, if you do not know what land you are currently on, you are currently on, please check out the website that was just put in the chat. That way you could find out. Some, some of us are spread out throughout the state, throughout the nation. So, you know, we ask you that you first acknowledge the land that you are currently on because all of this land is stolen land, it's occupied land and belongs to indigenous people. Yawi, thank you. And we also honor whatever indigenous um, background you may have as well um, uh, from anywhere in the continent or, or beyond. Um, all right, um, Bobby? Yeah, so Black Lives Matter. Uh, to our students and colleagues in the Black community and across the diaspora, we stand with you. You are valued and, and an important member of our campus and off-campus family. We all need to acknowledge the challenges and work to change them. We must work together as people of color and allies, people who are concerned about our future to eliminate these systematic um, disparities. We take a stand today and always because Black Lives Matter. And, and, and it's um, important to say how, how important it is to acknowledge the, the atrocities and the systematic way in which um, Black men have been um, um, violently um, uh, killed and in, in, in continue to be um, brutalized, continue to be kept out of, of the spaces that, uh, that are, are rightfully ours. So, um, you know, more than, more, than, more than ever, we need to actually uh, acknowledge that as well. So this being the MOC, it's important to acknowledge um, that very important aspect. And we'll talk a little bit about that in, in, in a bit. Yeah. Triple CP statement, stop AAPI hate. Triple C P condemns hateful acts of violence, harassment, and rhetoric targeting Asian, Asian Americans, Pacific Islanders, and Desi Americans. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been an alarming increase in the discrimination and violence per perpetrated on the APIDA community. These acts of violence are nothing new. We are disturbed by these xenophobic, racially motivated attacks. Triple CP stands in solidarity with all of our students, colleagues, and community partners who experience marginalization and threat. Thank you, Miguel. And Frank? Hey, everyone. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the impact that the uh, 
pandemic has had on our students and also the what the plan is for the UCs and UCLA. So you can see the pandemic impact. The death rate of, for Latino people is 21% and for Black people it's 9% higher uh, than statewide. And a case rate for communities with medium income, uh, $40,000, less than $40,000 is 37 impact, particularly men of color who have experienced the largest enrollment drops. And you can see UCLA returned for campus. So this is their plan. So for fall 2001, uh, close to 80% uh, of courses would be offered in person as well as most labs. Uh, UC will require anyone accessing UC facilities or in-person UC programs to be fully vaccinated prior to the fall terms. Uh, UCLA is planning for on-campus housing this fall and expects to offer housing to first-year transfers and a higher percentage of second-year transfers. And of course, uh, Los Angeles mandates mask into effect Saturday night, July 17th. Uh, so we're just asking everyone to be safe, you know, follow protocols, wear your mask. If you're able to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. Uh, but we are still here. We are still uh, uh, moving along. We are resilient. Uh, please be safe. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. And um, I also want to acknowledge that the fact that uh, this, um, the higher percentage of second year transfer students that are getting housing is also because of the advocacy of Suleika and the um, transfer um, uh, leadership coalition. So uh, thank you for doing all that advocacy and all that work and, and making sure that uh, the university is being held accountable. So thank you. All right, so as you may have heard, you may have um, um, seen in either, if you came to one, any of the info webinars or to, um, or to any of our, um, um, or to any, or, or you have read any of our, our literature, uh, our program is grounded in critical race theory in education. So um, some of you may have heard, I know that this has been in the news as of late. Um, and, um, you know, we, we, we use critical race theory in education to really examine and think about why are the disparities that exist um, in education and particularly in the, in the pathway from community college to four-year institutions, why are there differences? And, and what can we do to, um, to fix those differences, right? So as seen any approach to, to a solution, first you have to have a framework. First you have to have a way to identify where the problem may, um, may be at, right? So um, what critical race theory in education is basically saying is let's, let's, let's take a lens uh, these institutions that are part of the US context, part of the US history, right? And let's look at why are there these disparities? Why do they, you know, why um, they have existed, you know, since the inception of this country and why do they continue to persist? Even though, as we know, you know, civil rights movements happen, you know, many different laws have um, happened. Um, so to, um, to alleviate some of these this, this, um, this, uh, disparities and, and really to, to eradicate and to um, end any of these disparities, right? Um, but they still continue to exist. So um, there's a, a, a theory, right? A, a, a way of thinking, a way of looking at the world that would say, well, the reason why this, this continues to happen is because communities like ours may not be in, um, um, equipped to, um, to uh, perform and achieve at a higher level than other students. Maybe these communities, and this has been said, many of these communities may not um, prioritize education, may not value education. These communities um, don't have um, the support from families, community, et cetera, right? So um, and what we call that is uh, a deficit, deficit thinking, right? What we, um, that it attributes all of the different ways in, the, uh, in which the outcomes happen to that same community. The, the community doesn't have this or that, or it lacks this or that, right? So in, in what it will try, if you are approaching it from that point of view, 
then you will try to uh, fix the community, the person, the student. Uh, you as a community college student, you as a transfer student, you are the ones that need to be fixed, quote unquote, under that way of thinking. Um, for our way of thinking, we believe that um, in the US, um, um, race and racism has played a, 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 an impactful role in uh, many institutions, including education. Um, CRT uh, came from the uh, uh, from law, from the law world. Um, and it examined the way in which laws were um, impacting or being um, or being were implicitly biased against um, uh, communities of color. Uh, from there, we also saw that, of course, uh, not only are institutions like uh, the law um, racist, but also places like uh, education, uh, K through 12, uh, higher, higher, edu higher learning education. Uh, all of these institutions are part of a legacy that has left um, unequal outcomes, right? And when we look at, instead of looking at you as a student, but instead we look at the systems that have created these inequalities, disparities, we look at the systematic way in which, um, um, in which groups have been prevented from achieving, entering, and really um, occupying the spaces like UCLA, right? So um, it is not necessarily um, the, the idea that, that we are lacking something, but the fact that systematically there are barriers that exist that prevent us from, um, from achieving at the highest um, possible or highest uh, potential or, uh, or prevent um, the ways in which um, communities can excel, um, not only individually, uh, of course, but also as, 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 as part of, of the larger, uh, part, part of the larger community as well. So we're challenged that idea that, you know, you're the one that needs to be fixed, but that the systems need to be fixed, right? And um, we value what you bring. We value the knowledge that you have uh, having um, gone through these uh, spaces. You understand the, the type of ways in which um, there has been no support or there has been no um, real pathway to get you to where you need to get to, right? So um, it is also important to um, value that not only, you know, in academia, we value observation, right? That's, you know, uh, and, and supposedly you are, uh, you're going to be objective if you're observing the communities that you're trying to, um, to, um, to study, right? But we also think it's important to value that experience that you have, and that um, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, that your your knowledge that you bring, whether it's from the community, whether it's the family, whether it's uh, navigating um, spaces that were not made for you, that's also important to um, to um, prioritize. And um, we also take the approach that. It's not only um, one approach that will help us get there, but it's, it's the perspectives from many different ways, uh, the, def the many different ways in which we have um, um, different identities that can allow us to understand and be more, um, be more nuanced when we come up with solutions, because we are going to be looking at the intersectionality of, of all of our identities. And, and it is important to look at, at all, the, all those identities. Um, so for us in this webinar, we're looking at uh, two main identities. Of course, um, we're looking at race and, and, and ethnicity, and we're also looking at gender, right? And, and the way in which those intersect to um, both uh, create barriers and also to, um, to help us um, move forward as well. And then lastly, um, the academy, I mean, the, the, this theory is not just to be, you know, just a nice little theory that's supposed to be here in the ivory tower, but we really wanna make sure that we're doing something about it. So 
for us, it's not only important to know that there is these challenges, know that there is these barriers, but that we also have to do something about it. And, um, and, and we come as community to, um, to, to create a village and to create um, the solutions that are going to be much more impactful. Uh, and again, just uh, um, as, as, as a note specifically for this webinar, um, and as, as it was mentioned by Frank, men of color have been impacted the most negatively uh, at the community colleges. Uh, just to give you um, uh, uh, a couple of, of statistics in the last um, two terms in the, in the spring and, and the last fall and spring, at Compton Community College, um, we saw a 21% 20, in the fall and a 27% in the spring drop in enrollment. Okay, so that, that's almost one third, you know, 20% uh, and almost uh, one third of the students who were supposed to enroll at Compton Community College. And if you know anything about Compton Community College, this is a school that is mainly uh, students of color, mainly uh, Latinx and Black African American students. And the most, um, the most, the, 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 the sharpest drop was with men of color. So we're talking about one third, almost a third of students who have disappeared from the community college, right? That's, that's a Compton. At Santa Ana College, another college, there was almost a, a 40 to 45% drop uh, between the last two um, fall and spring of Latinx male students. 40 to 45% at Santa Ana College. Again, uh, a college that's mostly, um, mostly uh, Latinx uh, and, and, and we are disappearing, right? Men of color are literally disappearing from the community college spaces, which would mean they're disappearing from the transfer pipeline, right? So that's, 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 this is a crisis. For me, this is a crisis to, to not have this many students who were supposed to be at a community college, not enroll at a community college this, this last year, particularly men of color, is a crisis. I mean, it's, it was already a crisis to begin with before the pandemic, it's more of a crisis now, and it's going to lead us into more of a crisis in the, in the next couple of years if we don't do and act or, uh, and do something about it. So anyways, all of that to say that um, for MOC, it is important to acknowledge that this has impacted us, impacted you all the most negatively. The pandemic has definitely been showing the disparities and showing the racist ways in which uh, or, 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 or systems operate, right? So, um, and because of that, we always, uh, one of the things that we always do is acknowledge you. We want to, whenever we see you, we want to affirm you. So you'll hear us, and I think you, you may have heard at the beginning how we were saying MOC, and whenever there's a, a, a participant uh, in our program, we often, often want to affirm because we want to acknowledge you. We want to, um, we rec recognize you that you are here. You are, you know, you are, you are precious, and that we want to, we want to make sure that whenever we occupy these spaces, that we are acknowledging each other and that we are in brotherhood in, in, in with each other. So, um, to to the next part, I'm gonna ask. Uh, I think it's Alejandro and Bobby who are going to help us to acknowledge, um, acknowledge us, uh, acknowledge our existence and, and acknowledge the fact that we are here. Yes, yes. So oh. right now what we're about to take you through is a call and response chant, right? So for those that don't know what a call and response chant is, is we're going to lead the chant. So we're going to say something like, M-O-C, right? Which stands for men of color, right? M-O-C. So when we say it, go ahead, Bobby. No, go ahead. No, I'm just... <laughs> you, know, you know, Bobby gets excited. Just yeah. I just said M-O-C. <laughs> Can't hold himself over here. <laughs> right? so when I say, so for example, if I was the one calling it out, M-O-C, then, um, then Bobby would respond, 
with MOC, right? MOC, just like that. Like that, yeah, yeah. Mm. So it's gonna go like this, right? This one is gonna go like when I say, "Who are we?" We're all gonna turn on our mics, right? And we're gonna say MOC. Does that make sense? So Bobby and I are gonna say, "Who are we?" And y'all say MOC. I might say it with y'all though, because you know I'm gonna join in. <laughs> and that's the pitch, right? Say it slow. Don't say MOC, right? Like say, say, "Who are we?" MOC. All right. So we're gonna practice oh, so really good class. <laughs> So go ahead, Bobby, start us off. We're, we're going to have to unmute everybody. You know, don't you, it doesn't work if you say it with yourself muted. You know, just a heads up, y'all, just a heads up. <laughs> but if you can't, though, if you absolutely can't, like, I don't know, you're, like, at a funeral, you know, you can't, like, you have to, I don't know, see, you know, if you're, like, watching this, if you're we're at work, you know, and your boss is right there, <laughs> you know, it's okay, you know, you could type it in. But we highly recommend, uh, if you're able to, just, Turn up, you know, just turn on your sound and just say it once with us, okay? All right, so go ahead. Bobby, start this song and say who. Okay. So who are we? M-O-C-C. M-O-C-C. Let's go. All right, that, that, that one's kind of weak. We need to try one more time. <laughs> they need, need to, hear, though. They need to that know that we're here. Time. They need to know that we exist. Yeah, yeah. I need, I, the whole world needs to know. No, right. y'all, say it. Ready? Say it with your chest. Who are we? M-O-C-C. M-O-C-C. Who are we? M-O-C-C. M-O-C-C. Who are we? I said M-O-C-C. M-O-C-C. That's right. Oh, yeah, that was a little better. That was beautiful. That was yeah. All right, so <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. And just, again, um, uh, we do it, of course, just, you know, again, just whenever we enter, um, different uh, when we were in person we were in, in different rooms we will we will just you know uh, acknowledge each other by, by that um in, in the virtual space we just put it on the we also put it on the chat we just you know we just want to acknowledge that we are here and that we see you okay so that's that's and, and that's why this is important to us to 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 just acknowledge that we are here all right Awesome. Thank you, Santi, and thank you. uh, Yeah, your best is here. (laughs) Thank you, Santi, for that amazing conversation regarding critical race theory um, and for the committee for doing that that chant uh, to get us up and running. Um, So Santi already talked about critical race theory um, and how we use it at, you know, uh, our work is grounded on critical race theory. And another framework that we also use is what we call community cultural wealth, which is a concept that was developed by Dr. Tara Yoso. And what community cultural wealth, uh, it's composed of different elements, as you can see here on the screen, right? Linguistic capital, aspirational capital, familial capital, social navigational resistance, and cultural capital. Um, and Dr. Tara Yoso developed uh, this concept um, to acknowledge that communities of color right? We possess an array of knowledges, skills, abilities, contacts, live experiences that we use on a daily basis to survive and resist different forms of racism and forms of oppression. Um, and so just to provide a few examples as to what each one of these um, um, embody, uh, we can start with linguistic capital, okay? So the purpose of community culture world before I, before I move forward is really to emphasize and underscore the different assets that we also come with, right? When we step in an academic setting that we even oftentimes we often overlook because historically, a lot of these abilities have been uh, suppressed by the dominant culture per se. And so Tara Yoso is really uh, reminding us, reminding us of the, again, of this community cultural wealth that we have that will help us, uh, not only help us navigate institutions of higher learning, um, but also resist the different barriers that are, you know, systematically paced, placed upon us. So with linguistic capital, for example, it's uh, our ability as students to develop communication skills um, through various experiences. So um, many of us may have, um, you know, grew up in a immigrant household where our first language was, for example, uh, the Spanish language. And I'm going to use myself as an example. And throughout my years, right? I've been able to be an interpreter for my family, especially my immigrant parents. 
Um, so that's that's a huge asset, right? That the university needs and that you bring to the university. Uh, when it comes to aspirational capital, um, the ability that us students have to maintain hopes and dreams, um, despite the different systemic um, oppression that we face, right? And the disparities that we see and we encounter in different social systems. When it comes to familial, right, our social and uh, refers to the social and, and personal human resources that, that we have and that we create uh, before we even step into a, a, an institution like UCLA, for example. Uh, social refers really about, it refers to uh, the social contacts that we create. And being in this space right now, being in this Men of Color webinar, uh, we are expanding that social capital. We are connecting with one another. We are networking. Um, and we can always rely on, on, on our social capital, again, to collectively navigate certain spaces as well. Uh, when it comes to navigational capital, for example, uh, it's our ability, again, to navigate social systems or social institutions like UCLA. And, you know, CCP as a whole is an example of that, um, that navigational capital, right? You heard um, from a lot of our colleagues who were part of CCP uh, during their time at community college, they transferred to UCLA to university of their choice. Um, and they're now back working for CCP. And many of them shared how CCP transformed their Again, journey. to navigate social systems or social institutions like UCLA. And, you know, CCP as a whole is an example of that, um, that navigational capital, right? You heard um, from a lot. Sorry, I was hearing in a second audio. I'm not sure if I was the only one. Um, and last but not least, resistance, resistance capital, right? Um, which means the, the, we have different experiences as communities of color um, where we have uh, fought for equal rights, for, for justice, um, and, and so forth. And so uh, we come with resistance capital because sometimes we carry on the legacy from previous, uh, <laughs> Bobby, uh, from previous uh, movements, right? So as a Chicano Latinx person myself, um, I've, I, I'm very aware the, of the privileges that I have today, thanks to the Chicana Chicano movement that you know took hold in the 1960s, 1970s. So now it is my duty to carry on that legacy and continue fighting uh, for, for equal change and continue fighting for access to institutions like UCLA, so on and so forth. Another form would be um, you know, with the Black African-American community, um, taking into account the, the work that the Black Panthers did, right? And creating access and so forth and carrying on that legacy. And so again, community cultural wealth, I'm looking at time um, and I don't wanna go a little bit forward, but again, it's, it's highlighting and underscoring all of these values, all of these lived experiences, all of these assets that we carry that we often overlooked ourselves or you know, they've been suppressed historically and, and using them collectively um, to navigate uh, systems, oppressive systems um, and barriers that have been placed upon us. I'm not sure if Santi, the master of explaining CRT and community culture, well, if you would like to add something that I may have missed. No, 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 definitely. I think that's just, you did a, an excellent job. So thank you, um, Beto. You're welcome, Bestie. <laughs> All right, and this is Pedro. Yeah, so before moving on further with the program, we want to take a moment to to establish some very basic community guidelines. Um, so the first one being uh, <clears throat> netiquette or also known as like zoom etiquette, right? Um, just like very basic stuff we probably already do, you know, like respect the cyber community. Uh, please keep your microphone muted and, and click on, on the speaker view. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, you can feel free to utilize the chat feature or make any comments, right? I think we've been doing that already though. Um, uh, any questions will be answered during the Q&A portion. Um, you know, step in, step back, meaning that it, that we really encourage participation, but if you feel that maybe you've been um, participating a, a little more than others, um, 
make sure to also keep in mind to also step back to encourage your other peers to to also participate one diva one mic right so if someone's talking let's say someone uh, a peer of yours is is making a comment or sharing something um we don't want to like interrupt each other or, like all talking at the same time unless unless it's moc time then we're all saying moc at the same time right but other than that if someone else is speaking you you don't want to like cut them off or anything like that uh challenge ideas not the messenger right again um we uh, if someone's sharing something uh, maybe there maybe there will be um disagreements we don't want to challenge the person right necessarily but we want to critique um the idea right um and lastly do not be afraid to ask um we want to create a very supportive environment and uh and we encourage um asking questions whether big or small So now we're going to talk about the medicine wheel, the sacred medicine wheel. So the medicine wheel is a sacred concept, right? It's a framework as well, in a sense of the way how we indigenous people, um, you know, view the world, but also respect the world and honor it. Um, the medicine wheel has been basically used by various different nations, different tribes um, in the Americas, right? From, from Alaska all the way to, you know, Chile. However, the one that we're specifically talking about right now and we'll be using as guidance will be the Ojibwe uh, medicine wheel, right? As well as the Lakota, uh, the Sioux medicine wheel, right? Which are more used. But like I said, this medicine wheel changes throughout different nations, different tribes um, and, and sorts, right? So we're speaking about this because this uh, webinar, we are using the medicine wheel as a way to understand and to heal and uh, to heal and to love each other, right? And how do we build ourselves up? How do we support ourselves as, as, um, as men of color in higher education, right? Um, for example, now the medicine wheel represents four different things, the four different directions, right? Um, the four seasons, um, four different type of medicines. And I'm not talking about Tylenol, I'm talking about sacred medicines that we use for ceremony, like cedar, uh, like sweet grass, tobacco, um, you know, sage and, and, and all that it represents the four seasons as well as this specific part that we want to talk about, right? The four different aspects of self, right? Now we have the mental, the mental self, right? The mental self, the spiritual self, the emotional self, and the physical self. All of those in unison make us. And when we have all of those, you know, um, when we work those aspects of ourselves, we find true balance. And that's very important for us because sometimes as men of color, right, we focus a little bit more on the physical, but because we focus too much on our physical, our mental seems to uh, deteriorate, right? Or maybe we're focusing too much on our mental, um, you know, but we forget our spiritual spark, spark, part, right? Or whatever it may be, right? It may be off balance. So, you know, this, this, this medicine wheel, which I said is, is sacred, is very important, um, you know, is a very very useful way on how we could better heal and support ourselves. Uh, to the left, we have a self-care medicine wheel, right? For right now that we're spe specifically using, right? And this wheel could be used to talk about right now, right? So for physical, um, you know, in terms of the physical part of ourselves, we need to wash our hands, take a relaxing bath and shower, drink more water, get enough rest and sleep, right? For our emotional aspect of right now during the COVID. Uh, feel and be aware of your emotions. Call and connect with your loved ones. Listen to your favorite music. Create a gratitude list, right? What have you been grateful during this whole entire pandemic that's been detrimental, right, to our families and our communities? What are you grateful for in these desperate times? It's okay to cry. It's okay to grieve. It's okay to write a journal and to seek support, right? Now, that's the rest of the medicine wheel right there. But these are very important things. And as this is it in, in practice, right? How we're seeing this medicine wheel, how we can practice this in our daily lives of, of respecting the four different aspects of ourselves. As you're about to see in our agenda, each day uh, we're focusing on two of these aspects of self. So we hope that you could use these concepts 
um, you know, very soon. You could also look it up on the internet and we'll be providing it too through our group chat, which we'll talk about shortly, um, more about this medicine wheel and how you could incorporate into your life. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. So I'm gonna go over the agenda uh, real quick. Um, but feel free to scan the, the QR code. And so you're able to actually uh, get it for yourself uh, so that you can follow along. Um, but uh, we started at 10 a.m. Um, we're gonna be moving after this uh, into the man box. Um, and we're gonna have a lunch break from 12 to two. Um, and then we're gonna welcome everybody back at two p.m. and then have spiritual traditions uh, in our journeys, followed by MOC uh, alum panel and uh, a closing raffle at 3.20. And then um, also from 3.45 to 4.30, we're going to have peer advising circles. So also stay tuned for that. But again, uh, feel free to scan the QR code so that you kind of you're able to follow track of it and everything that's going to happen. We also placed it in the chat if you're not able to scan it. Um, and for those that are maybe confused, uh, if you have an iPhone specifically, or if you have Snapchat, you could turn on your camera and then just hover it over that picture and a little link should pop up. So that's how you utilize the QR codes. Pretty sure Androids can do that too. I was gonna say, you don't have to have a <laughs> Now, I mentioned earlier that we have a group me a GroupMe is a really cool application. So if you're able to right now, please download this application. It's available on you know, iPhone as well as Android and any other thing in between. It's an amazing application, uh, an app where we're able to basically update y'all on events and resources, right? Um, especially for this program. This is a webinar, part of our Power to the Transfer webinar series. However, this program that we have is part of a of of you know a larger program right which is our scholars program and for those that are attending right now that are graduating high school seniors or current community colleges um this is one of the requirements in order for you to be part of our scholars program right so we'll we'll put you we'll we'll update y'all on that group me right more information um, but please join the group me bobby just dropped it i'm sorry santiago uh just just dropped it on the group chat so please, uh, that's a really good way to stay connected. That's where we'll be able to, like I said, drop um, events, resources, scholarships, um, you know, anything you guys need. If you guys have a question about transferring or just need uh, ways to stay connected with us, that's a really great way to do so. So please download that um, thing and yeah, there we go. Thank you. Miguel? Yes, hello. Um, so now we're about to do the man box, introducing my two brothers right here, Omare and Justin, you know, who have had a wonderful and great privilege to be doing this man box with back in 2019. Yeah. And um, you know how everyone was saying, oh, I was somebody's peer advisor or some. Um, or, you know, someone was my peer advisor. Well, um, I, these two men right here are my peer advisors, I think. They guide me and they provide so much wisdom um, and sometimes headaches. Yes, Amari, I'm talking about you. <laughs> but not really. I just, it's the, both of them are just amazing human beings that, that I am just really blessed to have um, in, in my life. And, and, and that I, every, every time that we have conversations, um, I learn something new, something different, something that leads me thinking about just the world in general, about, you know, just people in general and about brotherhood in general. And, 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 um, I, I am so honored to have them. They 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 are also part of the of the planning um, team. Really, a lot of, of of a lot of them, a lot of the two of them, 
is going to come through in the next um, day and two um, because they have they embody what I think um, are the men of color making positive changes in our communities. So with that, I want to say thank you to both Amari and Justin just for, um, you know, just being who you are. And I, I treasure that. So thank you. And I won't take any more time away from what we already took uh, at this point. So Justin and Amari, take it away. Right on, right on. So happy to be here. Thank you, Santi. Every time you start getting in those intros, I'm like, hold back the tears, hold back the tears. It always gets emotional over here. Uh, hello, everybody, to all of our Triple CP scholars in the house. Uh, my name is Justin Mendez. Currently, I'm a basic needs program manager over here at LBCC. And, you know, I came through as a Triple CP scholar way back when. Um, you know, I'm not as old as Santi. We had electricity, you know, back, back when I came through the program, thankfully. Um, I knew you before you were born. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is true. This is true. Um, but, you know, I, I do want to say, right, just in terms of the, the introduction, I transferred from Santa Monica College, you know, to UCLA, got my bachelor's at UCLA, got my master's at UCLA uh, in education. But, you know, I think one thing that stands out that I really just want to highlight in my intro is just this, this family, right? This uh, triple CP family. Uh, and it's been said in the chat, you know, how, um, you know, people are, are, you keep on hearing, right, two time triple CP scholar, people are coming back and everything. Uh, and that's what this space is about, you know, um, it's, it's about that family. And that's why we take so long, like for those introductions, because, you know, think about your family get togethers what do you do when you first get go like get, get to the barbecue you know you get to the party you go around and you got to say hi to grandma you got to say hi to the cousins got to say hi to your tias and tios like you got to say hello and you got to greet and, and acknowledge everybody like santi said so you know like that's that's what we are over here as a family and just a couple years ago you know I, i've had the the honor and the privilege of helping to get this particular moc program started with amari and santi um and plenty of others, right, as uh, of the people that you've heard. It's all uh, team oriented. And and then the other point that I wanted to highlight, right, is just the, the purpose of this being a men of color site. Like, why is there a specific men of color site, you know? And if you didn't hear it um, from like the, the CRT stats and the, the uh, pandemic stats that Frank was sharing and, you know, with Santi and Alberto were talking about, uh, we know like this is, the experience of MOC, right, is that statistically men of color are not succeeding within the educational realm, which is problematic because we know that education, it helps us to, to get to where we want to go as an individual, you know, um, but there's barriers in place, right? And so this whole program is to help us see the barriers, help us learn the game so we can navigate and get to the places that we, where we want to be, whether that's your education, your career, your spiritual or emotional well-being. Uh, you know, it's all about self-growth and that's exactly why you're all here. And that's what motivated me, you know, and, and why I love coming back to CCCP. Because when I first started and I first joined this program and I was in y'all seats that are like, what is CCCP? What is this stuff that they're talking about? And they shared the CRT, Community Cultural Wealth, and Statistics right on the screen. Uh, and I saw the Chicano, Chicana Educational Pipeline, right? And it said, like, you know, when 100 students start elementary, um, I think it was like 46, graduate high school, like 20 enroll in college. Like, most of those go to community college, and only, like, one actually transfers and gets to a university. And those statistics just, like, like hit me, right? Like, I remember hearing these statistics, you know, and and... and as a middle school student, somebody telling me like, yo, you know, as a, you know, as men, we have uh, a higher chance of being dead or in prison by the age of 25, instead of having a college degree. Uh, and then so that, that when I was like 25, and in my master's program, like, yo, that was like, like enlightening for me, like, whoa, like, I'm, I'm actually doing it, you know, and a lot of that is thanks to CCCP. So when you're hearing these stats, and you're hearing like this, this messed up stuff that's going on, you know, it's to motivate, it's to spark that fire because it's supposed to be us that are changing the statistics. We're changing the cycles, right? No matter where our family's coming from and what type of generational uh, experiences that we have in our life, you know, we're here and we're able to make that change today, you know, and, and with this knowledge and with this practice. 
Uh, and so, so take all this information, right? Take those stacks and let it spark that fire, you know? Because we're already breaking the statistic, right? We got 50 MOC in the house on a Monday morning saying like, hey, I'm trying to succeed. You know, that's 50, that's 50 people. That's a lot of people, right? To be in here in the program on Monday morning when they're saying that men of color aren't supposed to, we're not educated, right? We're, we're stereotypes as, as being streets and this, that, and the other. Um, but so, so that was my introduction, you know? That's why I'm here. And that's why uh, I, I love keep on coming back year after year because this is this is what we love to do, and uh, and I'm looking forward to getting into this conversation about uh, you know what is the man box and what is manhood? What's it mean to be a man? And we're gonna get that started. I'll pass it over to Amari. That's what's up. Appreciate you. Uh, I took a bunch of notes, but I'm gonna scrap them because Justin just took all my bullet points, and then so I'll just talk about myself. Here we go. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna talk about myself, and I'm talking about Justin too because he left a couple things out. There's only so much time we have in terms of our introductions. Uh, so <clears throat> it took me off and on about nine years to transfer, uh, nine to get. And then they gave me a couple extra associate degrees because it's like, you know what? You earned all of these. Um, and, and it was a struggle during that time. And I was a part of those numbers who dropped out uh, or were pushed out or who just are not coming back at Santa Ana College and Compton College um not 2021 but back in the late 90s early 2000s when i was struggling trying to get through school um that was rough for me uh i had um a while for about a year year and a half where i was actually homeless uh i had a bunch of time where i was hustling just to make ends meet um and I didn't have CCP. I didn't have access to, I didn't, I wasn't aware of CCP. Like you all are in a situation where you have access to these peer mentors and they're guiding you. I didn't know anything about that. I was out in the Inland Empire. Um, no idea, right? Uh, my daughter was born in 2004 and that changed how I thought about the world. I no longer wanted to work in, in warehouses. I, I changed everything and I ended up uh, focusing back in on school. Um, and that got me to transfer to UCLA. Uh, I majored in math and statistics. Um, I was a peer mentor in the summertime. I was a co-chair of STOP and a bunch of other activities on campus. I got a long list of things that we were participating in, but I never, rem I never forget what it took to get to that point and so my drive and my continual um, connection with CCP is because I know that I have the ability to reach y'all. So I'm here to be a resource to anybody on this call who may have gone through some type of struggle or just may need some type of guidance or mentorship or just somebody to chop it up with. Um, and so my current position, so after graduation, uh, I worked in the nonprofit sector, and then I went back to my community college as an alumni, and I worked and I uh, helped develop a men of color mentoring program. Then I got Justin connected to that, and we worked there together, and we built that from scratch. Um, and then Justin stayed in the community college system. I ended up going back to the nonprofit sector. And so now uh, uh, I have two companies that I work with. One is called Cultivating Hope, and the other one's called JTM Academy. JTM Academy, um, I sit now currently in the seat as the executive director of this nonprofit, and we help folks get into the mechanical trades and utility sector. Why do I say all that? Because of these dropout rates that we have on these campuses, because of the struggles that you all are going through, and because of this idea of um, what 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 is what is manhood about, and 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 where are we headed as men, and what is our role within our family structure? That's very important to me. Uh, because I've had to develop from who I was to who I am. And so we're going to talk about a lot of those ideas today. Um, but shout out to Justin for uh, never putting Santi on blast for stealing our idea about putting this program together. No one ever wants to acknowledge that. It's okay. I'm going to tell you a little story. We went to lunch one day. was like, hey, Santi, we should make a men of color summer program for a site for you guys. And he was like, wonderful. And then he made it. And then he gives us little crumbs like, oh, yeah, you guys could come back and talk to them. It's all good. But it's all good. We're family. We don't trip. Never mind that you stole the whole program to take it to, to Nurco. It's not stealing because we asked you. We was like, hey, Santa. Community you... cultural well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we, it's called recycling. I'm not a colonizer. We recycle. All right, here we go. I'm ready. That's my intro. Um, 
Shout out to all the shout out to all the um the former CCP. I, I can't call you out right now, but you know who you are. You all were our, our mentees. Then you got in UCLA. Now you're mentors and you're keeping that cycle going. If that's you, shout out to you, man. Y'all are uh, some special, very intricate parts of this, um, of this family structure. And it's beautiful to see you here. Uh, and I'm ready when you are, Justin. Yeah. And then just extending that welcome, right? It's, it's shout outs to those coming back and then a welcome to all of y'all new folks coming in. Uh, Cause that's also something new, right? That CCCP, CCCP did for me. It was putting me in a community of scholars. I think like Alejandro said something like that earlier, you know, um, but I never called myself a scholar until this program started saying, Hey, you're a scholar now. And so every single one of y'all in here need to start considering yourselves as scholars. Cause that's what this community is about also. Um, and so let's get let's get into this conversation, right? This this man box. What is the man box? We're about to be learning. Um, you know, we're we're having the conversation about what is manhood. Uh, this program is for men of color, and we're going to 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 dive deep into what does that mean. I do want to uh, first remind us of some of those community guidelines that were shared. Right, uh, all of this is to remind us that this is a safe space okay i know a lot of us have heard that before um but you know something else that i've heard more recently is not only to create a safe space but a brave space all right uh, and so i really want y'all to come to this conversation uh, and be yourselves but fully engage in the conversation um you know first off being turn on the camera right like it's hard to build community when we're looking at black screens and name on the screen like that's that's tough right so if you have the capability if you have a camera um yeah for sure miguel right that's to all of the mentors and the staff and to everybody too right like let's let's show them what's up um and and that's how we build community again right and so even if it's not right now maybe like now nah, like 47 people is, is too much to um to join is that carlos too what's up carlos uh um, <laughs> so so like like yeah, so so turn on those cameras at least when we get into our breakout rooms we're going to be getting into breakout rooms in a minute um and having those conversations so please turn on the cameras so we can it's just like we're we're in person and we're chopping it up you know uh, we're overcoming these these covid barriers um another big one i like is like what is what happens here stays here uh but what is learned here leaves here OK, so, you know, we're not here to, to go in and be chismosos and chismosas around and like, oh, dang, can you believe like this dude Bobby, you know, he was like whoop de whoop and oh, man, I can't believe Amari said that. Like, we're not going out here and taking this information outside of space like that. But we're, but the goal is for us to take this knowledge and to practice it in our own lives. Right. So to what you learn here, put it into practice. And that's hard because sometimes in these spaces like you know, I'm feel comfortable. I could do this. I could be myself. But then when I go back to the real world, then I got to put that mask on again and I got to like, you know, start disguising who I really am. Um, and so, you know, again, we'll get into that in a minute, but we want y'all to again, be brave and say what you got to say. Even if the whole group is saying like, oh yeah, we got to go right. We got to go right. And you're in your head. You're like, I think we should go left. Like be brave, say it. Like, you know what? I disagree. I think we should go left. And that's okay. That's what this space is about. We're all here to be uh, open, to be the better, best versions of ourselves, to grow. Um, and we're, we're not being judgmental of anybody, right? So, um, you know, we're not criticizing, we're not um, uh, judging nobody, okay? So be yourselves, uh, engage in the participation and participate. You got to share out because this conversation isn't going to be anything if it's just Amari and, and myself up here talking, right? Uh, so we're going to get into group breakouts in a minute. Um, and what's going to happen in your group breakouts is you're going to have a facilitator. They're going to share their screen and we're going to just list, right? We're going to describe what are some characteristics of a man, all right, so start thinking in your head, like, okay, if I have to describe what is like a real man, right? We've all heard it before. Oh, man up, right? Be a real man. Um, we've all heard it before. So we want to see like, what does that mean? Okay. So when you get into your group breakouts, start telling your facility, you're going to introduce yourselves, right? You're going to have a little intro with everybody. And then you're going to just start listing different characteristics of a man. All right. So we know, them. we know them all, you know, we know them all. Um, but, and then, um, you know, just the, the facilitator will take it away in the groups and then we're all going to come back to this big group and we're going to break it down and we're going to start ha having a, a larger group dialogue. Now, I do want to ask one icebreaker question before you all go into your group breakouts. OK, and again, we're practicing this uh, participation. OK, 
So I want at least like maybe two, three students to unmute yourself and share out um, and answer this question. In your life, when you were growing up, who did you look up to as the man? Like who was the man that you would look up to when you were growing up, okay? Um, we all had somebody that we we're looking up to. You know, maybe it was like our dad, maybe it was a fictional character, right? Maybe it was like a person from a movie or a person from a TV show that I always liked. Like they were the man that I was trying to, to be, right? That I was trying to, to copy and be like. Um, and maybe it wasn't even an actual male. Maybe it was a female in your life that you really looked up to as like, yeah, like they're, they're the real man. Like they're the real um, like hefe or hefe in my life. Um, so if I could get um, a couple of people to actually unmute yourself and share, but I want to encourage everybody to put it in the chat. Okay, what's your answer in the chat? Um, I see Salvador said, said um, you know, his, his mom. Thank you for sharing, Salvador. Uh, you know, and, and I'll go ahead and share mine too, right? I'll just get it started. So for me growing up, and then I see Miguel's hand. So we're going to go to you next, Miguel. Uh, for me growing up, it was my brother. My brother's like nine years older than me. Um, but to me, he was always the man. And he took a very different approach, right? Um, he was um, caught up in gangs. He was in and out prison his whole life and was locked up for the large majority of, of his life. But he was always a do as I say, not as I do type of mentor. Um, and he was the one who was always motivating me and pushing me, even if it was just through a phone call or a weekend visit. You know, he really helped me get through my tough times and stay motivated. Um, but sometimes, you know, there was also some not positive things, but he was always the cool one. You know, he had the parties at the pad. He had the car and things like that. So he was the man for me growing up. And then we'll go uh, Miguel. And then I saw Johnny and then Carlos. And then yeah. everybody throw it in the chat. Throw your answer in the chat, too. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Miguel. And for my male like figure, it would be my dad, I guess, because like, I grew up in like a more traditional like household, like conservative because my parents were immigrants from Mexico and they have like that mentality. And my dad was always like the type to work. He was like always telling me work hard, work hard, do not join gangs. You got to do school. And if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't even be doing college because like after I graduated, I just went to work and not do college because I wasn't like really confident. But he was like, no, you got to do college. You got to do college. So he kind of like motivated me a lot. And even though he had like some toxic masculine like traits, like in overall, he was like a really good like masculine figure in my life. I would say. Thank you, Miguel. Appreciate you sharing. We'll go uh, Johnny and then Carlos, and then we'll, we'll get into our group breakouts. Uh, what's up, guys? Johnny um, Webster. My, it's funny, like I didn't have a real man in my life. My godmother was who I met at church. She was a, a police officer, and she honestly like helped me become a real man she raised her son as a single as a single parent and i saw him go to high school go to college you know get a life and it helped me see that while i didn't have a father and i didn't have uncles to look up to i had this woman who raised this guy to be a really upstanding person and it helped me um see what a man could be if given the opportunity to just you know show up for themselves Appreciate you sharing, Johnny. Pass it to my man, Carlos. Well, good, 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 good afternoon. Good morning, still. Good morning, peeps. Uh, my name is Carlos. I'm at work. Um, who's the man in my picture? I believe the man is myself. I grew up uh, without a dad, and I had to learn through all the struggles and Every time I would fall, the only person that will kind of know what to do is me, you know. I fall so many times, I'm still falling, and I'm still learning, so the man is me. And I give a big proud for my mom raising five kids by herself. And that's pretty much, pretty much it, brothers. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Carlos. Um, again, just calling on the folks in the chat. Thank you all for sharing, right? She said the dad, Santi, his primos, um, you know, when he was younger, and then his mom, you know, we had a... Hey, Justin, I'm going to say something real quick. Yeah, go ahead. So I think every year this happens. Every year there's there's uh, guys who say, you know what, I, don't, I didn't really have that male role model, so shout out to my mom or my grandma or, or my auntie or, you know what I'm saying? That's okay too. 
because if that's who was your role model and then if that's who helped you get to that uh to become the man that you are today then that's who it is like we're looking for who that man was but the reality is some of us don't have that male role model as you're coming up as a as a, as a youth so um i know personally myself as a father i've had to get over the irritation the soulful irritation on every father's day when people shout out their moms and and they go oh happy father's day to the moms who had to be the mom and the dad i had issues with that for years because uh, I raised my daughter, right? And and so uh, she's lived with me for years. And I think, well, well, no, we don't do that on Mother's Day. No one says shout out to the single dads who raised their kids, right? And in my family, there's been a bunch of men, and and I know other men who who raise their kids on a regular basis. And we don't we don't we don't do that on Mother's Day, we don't, but we do it on Father's Day. I no longer care. It don't matter to me. I think I think if that's your experience and if that's what you want to do then who am I to rain on your parade and acknowledging your mom twice per year? Because moms should be acknowledged 365 days per year. So, so it's okay to acknowledge moms on Father's Day. And it's okay for me to say, I'm not gonna acknowledge my fatherhood on Mother's Day. Um, and, and, and we don't have to go to war over this. So if your mom was your example of a man, go ahead and shout that out and put that in the chat too. Shout out to all the moms out there doing what they do for, for us and helping us grow into our manhoods. Anyways, me and Justin, me and Justin, we've had plenty of conversations about that too over the years. We always talk about that. That's one of the things we talk about. Like, man, they're taking over our one day. We get one day, but it's okay. So, Santi gave you your shout out, okay? He, he gave you your shout out <laughs> in, the, in the chat. Just for oh, you, Amari. That's great. That's you great. celebrate it. You celebrate it, bro. I'll take a screenshot of that. All right, cool. So we're going to jump into our group breakouts now. And again, first thing y'all are going to do is introduce yourselves. I, I, I encourage y'all and welcome y'all to please share your, your uh, screen so we can see all your beautiful faces. Uh, thank you again to those who turned it on. Your icebreaker in the group, okay, you're going to share your name, what school you're coming from, and who's your favorite superhero, okay, as, as everybody gets into the group. And then just follow your facilitator. Y'all are going to be putting characteristics on what are manly characteristics. That's, that's what it's going to come down to, okay? So uh, I'll go ahead, ask for uh alejandro if you could go ahead and break us up and then we'll be back in the group let's say 20 minutes yeah like 11 or 12 or 5 and let me let me give one technical aspect of these breakout rooms so for you peer mentors who are going to be in the rooms your slide is the room you're in so if you go to, if you go to breakout room number one you're going to be filling in slide number one uh and it'll be labeled if you're in breakout room number two number three number four then respectively you're going to be in those two, three, or four slides, and you'll see that. And we're gonna jump around to each group. So everyone has their own slide, fill in your slide. If your number is based on the breakout room you're in. See y'all in 20 minutes. Can you post that 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 um, slide or that um, that Google Doc, wherever we're filling it out? Yeah, I did. I, I put it in the chat to everyone privately. Oh, okay, got you, thank you. Yeah, check the chat. A quick question. I kind of just yes. got here. Um, so we're going to put you inside of one of the rooms. Your name is uh, Arnold? Okay. We got you. What's going on, bro? We got you. Yep. Hey, and Alejandro, can I jump around from room to room? Ooh, um, I put you to facilitate one. Okay, but... okay. I got you. No, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Sure? Okay. Yep. All right, peace. Okay, okay. Hi, Yarin. Hi, Best. Hi, Sebastian. How y'all doing, Gabriela? How y'all doing? If you're able to, please join a group. Please join a group. If you're able to, Santiago, Santi. If you're able to, please join a group. Thank you so much. Thank you. Gabriela, how are you doing? Please join a group. Thank you very much.
Hi, hello, best. How are you doing? We are in breakout rooms, okay? Just letting you know. So I think you won't be all surprised, but we are in breakout rooms. Hi, hello, best. I see you jumped in and out. If you're able to join one of the breakout rooms, please join. Yeah, I'm trying. Oh, if you like, I could put you into one. I'm sorry about that. Let me put you okay. in. Okay, you you should get a request. Thank you. 